So where do you sit in the audience? Say lip sync when you're beginning at your first uh, public performances. Where do you sit? I hide. I can't sit in the audience. <laughs> How do you listen to the audience if you're hiding? No, no, but that's not what I'm. I'm not listening to the reactions in the room. I'm listening to what people say afterwards. To, oh. to people, people write to you. People stay afterwards. Uh, not just fellow actors or fellow writers or tons of people. I get tons of. Uh, it's, it's not just fan mail. It's people you know yeah. whom it stroke a chord to a point that they have to write to you and tell you. Uh, uh, reviewers and reviewers hate that because I'm actually using what they're saying about my show. So a reviewer is supposed to cut your head or mm -hmm, you know, mm -hmm. make you somebody. But uh, mm -hmm. I, you know, so I read reviews and I go, well, I disagree with this, but I agree with that. He's right. Oh, you know, they, they, he has a point there. And then we change it the night after that. And that's not supposed to be. Well, then what's cri criticism for? You know, so. Not saying that I'm doing that literally, but I mean I, I do that a lot. I, I listen to what. To what people but you say. have also have and the. I'm not trying to please people. When I'm saying I'm listening, I'm not saying oh they don't like it. Let, let let let's make it so that they like it. Let's make it so that they understand it. Let's make it as as or let's use their idea. They, that's this is a good idea. Our show is not about what we thought it was. So, what is it about? And let's follow that. But you have the confidence to change it. I, yeah, absolutely. That Some people don't. Some people no, go, absolutely. no, the reviewer's wrong. Forget it, forget yeah. it. We're sticking. But you ha where does the confidence come in you to, well, let's change it then? Well, I don't know. I, I, <coughs> I, uh, maybe because, um, contrary to, to film and, t and television where things are canned and, and filmed and you can't really change anything, at least up until today you can't do much. Once your film is edited, it's edited. Uh, it's, it's exactly the opposite with, with theater. You could, every day you could do what you want when you want if you, you know providing you have the time and the energy and the union rules and, <laughs> and all of that but, but I mean but every day you can change things until it works until what the thing has to say is revealed but the system is not built that way we're in a theatrical system that forces us to work as if we were in a film set which is all wrong so you have to invent your own system you're talking about the confidence of what you do in a way I can't separate that out from the confidence of Quebec culture and this explosion that happened in Quebec in the 1980s of creating its own culture. Are, do you feel part of that family? Of, can you tell me a little bit of uh, what it was like to yeah. be a Quebecer at that time? Well, definitely there, there's a sense of confidence in Quebec culture uh, more than ever. I think it's this, this, this sense of... Uh, we know much more who we are, so we're more confident, and we have the impression that we have our say on things now, and, and that we, we we have a new way of showing or saying. Or I mean, we 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 feel we can add one more idea to the chorus of ideas what's going on in the world. And all that. It's just that Quebec culture is still very much centered on itself, though. So the, the, even though there's been a big internationalist movement in the '80s and the '90s, where a lot of uh, companies, theater companies and dance companies have been, have been touring and, and showing stuff abroad. Uh, it's, it's difficult. It's a bit of an... Uh, Montreal is an island, literally an island, and so there's a kind of a... Because you stay in Quebec City. I stay. I live in Quebec City, yeah. And why? Why not Montreal? Why do you stay in Quebec City? Well, there's a lot of reasons for that. I mean, there's, there's a sentimental reason because I was born there and I was raised there and my family was there. And, and, uh, my friends are there and all that is that, but there's also the, the quality of living in Quebec City that you don't have in Montreal that for an artist. I mean, you, you, in Quebec City you can concentrate. It's big enough a city to have a city life, but it's small enough a city not to be burdened by media and, and other productions and being uh, oversaturated with demands. And So it's an ideal little haven to, to, to do the kind of thing I do, because I don't, I, I don't do TV, I, I don't do films anymore, I don't... Uh, I'm not part of the show business thing. I'm not. I'm not into show business. So I do theater and, 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 and I do creation. So that means that you need to have your your people in small hotel rooms around where you, you work. You, you need. You need. You need. It's a kind of a cocooning uh, mm -hmm. situation. And uh, so, anyways, there's tons of reasons why why I chose to go back to Quebec City and work from there. Uh, and and I'm not saying people in Montreal can't do it, but you're. You're distracted by way too many things in Montreal to work in, in that fashion. And I love performing in Montreal. That's great. We have great audiences there and it's a great place to be and that's great. But to create, I think Quebec City is a much better place.
place for me. Okay, this, that's, that's my name. But there, there's, there's something... Because um, I want you to talk a little bit, if you could, because you've, you've watched English Canada, mm -hmm. and you are Quebecer, and you, <coughs> you are part of that uh, yeah. confidence of Quebec culture that we in English Canada are so envious of, as we cannot create a critical mass here. And so what, what, mm -hmm. what drove that confidence? Uh, I know Quebec finding itself and the Quiet Revolution, but... Well, I think there's, there's one thing that has to be said. I mean, to be, to be fair, I think that um, English Canada uh, is being robbed of its excellence uh, more and more. Uh, it's not just the, the big brains and the doctors and the surgeons and the people that go south. It's, you know, actors, writers, directors slide much easier it's much easier to to be propelled outside of English Canada there's more opportunities the US is uh, you know the money all of that is very 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 compelling and, and uh, we don't have that in Quebec so or we have it just a little bit but uh, so that handicap we had actually is a plus because it means that we've kept I'd say a lot of the excellence a lot of the people it's a very very effervescent place to be Montreal it's, Tons of great artists and people and thinkers and all of that. It's a great. At the same time, it's a it's, it's a bit insular. English Canada on the other part has amazing writers, amazing actors, but very quickly you're being noticed and you go down. So and you can't stop that exodus. Now, how can you stop that? But link so, that to so the. That's, so that's what I'm saying. It's it's an, it's un, uh, I always find that a bit. It's a bit unfair for English Canada because English Canada say, "Yeah, in Quebec, what is it? Why, why is culture on the on, on the first page of a newspaper and not in?" What? Also, because it's a political thing. Uh, English Canadian culture is not political. It is very apolitical. Even when people try to make it political, it's not that political. In Quebec, just the fact that it's in French, just the fact that it's, it's political from the start. So uh, it gets subsidized by every government because they want they want you on their side. And, you know, so it's a fair. It's a big thing in Quebec culture. It's it's closer to how um, people in, in Europe use culture as a political argument, as an economic argument also. Right. This is the, the big thing right now in Quebec that I think English Canada is, 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 tr is trailing very slowly behind Quebec at that level is that mayors and prime ministers and all that doing huge forums and you know, all about and trying to you know, try to get the, the, um, the local uh, city of commerce is to invest in culture that culture means business it's a big thing uh, and and uh, so that's the, the policies now in Quebec resemble the policies of Germany and, and Sweden you know where culture is used to but we make these arguments here and they bounce off the outsides of the bank's buildings they just bounce and fall down so what can I say it's <laughs> yeah but maybe it's a question of, of, of critical mass also you know it's a question of uh, if you do have a, a place where all all artists, all creators, all uh, are all kind of concentrated. Uh, but when I c whenever I come back from Quebec, mm -hmm. or, or when I come back from France, or when I, c I, c I come back to Toronto, I love Toronto. Mm -hmm. I come back. I feel I've come back to a commercial culture. The commercialism has embedded itself in us. If when I go to New York, which is also a commercial culture, it has a strong art, arts community, but only through massive wealth, massive population, and it is New York. Here, we don't have those masses of power. And so the commercialism, which is in our imaginations, and our mentalities, and our television screens, and our billboards, has in, come in through the pores of the skin. And I don't feel that when I'm in Montreal or if Quebec. If, if, if what comes first, the, the egg or, or, or the chicken, but uh, um, for example, uh, right now, uh, in the past six, seven years, at least, uh, Montreal is the, the hotbed of all the new groups, you know, the, the young musical groups. It's the big thing. You know? And everybody in North America is converging to Montreal because that's where the music scene is right now. And um, there was a special documentary that was done with um, two guys from Rolling Stone magazine who are based in Chicago and who had um, predicted this. And what they do is that they say, well, um, economically, uh, the, the economics of a city uh, <clears throat> decides on, on you know, if, if it's going to be a great place for music or theater or dance or whatever. He said, when, when um, for example, uh, Seattle, there was a Seattle sound, you know, there was the, the whole grunge thing from Seattle. 
Seattle was a city up until recently where uh, that hadn't been gentrified, where there were no condos all over the place, where uh, an artist could uh, earn his life as uh, doing one job as a waiter and in the evening work on his act. You know? And then you don't have that in Seattle anymore. Seattle's way too expensive. Uh, people have to do two or three jobs or change jobs or whatever. And he said Montreal still has that thing that you know, apartments are not that expensive. Right. The real estate is not that expensive. People can do one thing and then do another when they do their act. So they say they can, and, and that's what they, they think, but they say Montreal will be gentrified like all North American cities and we'll have to see where's the next hotbed of, of uh, so, and, and I feel, I mean, as, as you say, you feel when you come back to Toronto that it's become very commercial. Yes, I, I have to admit, I haven't been here for a while and I can't believe how obsessed with real estate people are and how the whole city's one big glass tower, but um, I used to hang out a lot in Vancouver and Vancouver's become that also, and suddenly in this forest of skyscrapers and condos and luxury uh, apartments, they, suddenly what, there's a little theater that hasn't been refurbished in mm -hmm. 30 years, and you wonder well, what happened, what happened to that, you know, the, the West Coast trend, and the, uh, so, I don't know, really, I, I think that uh, there has to be a balance of, of how people see the development of industry and, eco and, and economics in this country and, and realize that if you want to keep your brains here, if you want to keep engineers, architects, doctors, scientists, if you want them in your region, they need good dance, theater, cinema, they need culture, they, they need it. And that's, that's the argument, that's a German argument. Uh, when Mercedes-Benz opens a new design thing, they say, okay, which of the 15 cities where we th we want to establish a new uh, a new house a new place uh, what do you have to offer and hamburg says well we have great great opera here and we have this and then we also have sports and we have this mm. and then you have hanover and they compete this is this healthy competition mm. using culture as an argument to draw